why your life sucks and how you're gonna fix it. Forewarning, this is one of those hard truth videos. I know I haven't done one in a while, but um, I think it's time. So don't mind my location today. I'm actually at my rental property, um, overturning it for the next tenants to come in. And um, I had to be here and it's quiet. So here we go. You clicked on this video for a reason. And that's because in some way, shape or form, you feel like your life sucks, okay? And a lot of times when we feel that way, we get stuck in this whirlwind where we feel like we can't get out of it. A lot of times what we need is a nice swift kick in the face, verbally, mentally, when that happens to kind of shake us out of that. Before I get into these, uh, I think I have six things, understand that if you're feeling triggered, if you get upset about something I say or the way I say it, that means that that is something that you need to look at. That's actually an indication of something that you need to do or to work on, okay? And that's why our emotions and our feelings are so valid. We just need some concrete ways to get out of that funk, okay? If you're new here, I'm Sarah and I created this channel to help you build a happier, more authentic, live loving and beautiful life through self-mastery and spirituality. By the end of this video, I hope you find some insight as to why you feel like your life sucks and maybe it's something that you haven't thought about and how to actually fix it. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is probably gonna be the most triggering, but let's just get it out of the way. And that is, you're probably pretty close-minded. Now, I would say most people would consider themselves open-minded, but most aren't. And the reason I say that is because let's 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 slide right in let's talk politics if you feel that you sway one way or the other it doesn't matter which way and someone else brings up politics and they're on the other side or religion or any of these big topics and you don't even open your mind up to the possibility that the other person may be right or consider their point of view and where they're coming from you're closed-minded Okay, if someone like me or maybe a, a channel that's more spiritually inclined than even mine, because I feel like mine's really, it's kind of that bridge between people that aren't into spirituality and people that are and to kind of close that gap. And you're listening to something that just seems outrageous or maybe with all of these allegations or they're talking about how the government can change the weather and all of these things that seem insane. If you're automatically writing those things off and saying there's no way that that could be true, if you're ever saying there's no way that could be true about anything, about aliens, about conspiracies, about any of that kind of stuff, you are closed minded. Why is that making your life suck? It doesn't allow you to expand. Okay, do you know how many times my mind has changed about things. It doesn't mean you're a hypocrite, okay? We have this habit of defining ourselves by what we believe and what our opinions are, and we put ourselves in this box that we implement and we don't allow ourselves to step out of, okay? But if you're boxing yourself in in this belief and this way of thinking, and you're not even willing to open up to the possibility that there is potentially another truth, you're never going to grow. If you're not growing, if you're not evolving, you're stagnant. If you're stagnant, when everyone else is moving forward and progressing, you're actually essentially moving backwards, even though you're staying in the same place. It's a beautiful thing to be able to open your mind to other possibilities and <clears throat> People that are stagnant and that are not growing are unhappy because what's the point? You know what I mean? Like if everything is always the same, if your mindset is always the same and never changing, you're going to get bored. Your life is going to be mundane and you're going to wake up, do the same things every day, think the same way every day, feel the same way every day, and nothing will ever change. So I invite you to be more open-minded and to really look at yourself and see where in your life you are being closed-minded because we're all closed-minded when it comes to certain things. Um, myself, I 
have become very open-minded and when I feel myself getting triggered about certain things, I've come to realize, oh, this is actually where I need to open up. And that may not sway, you know, listening to other people's perspectives may not change your mind on something and that's okay. If anything, it will further solidify how you feel. But if you're just going into the conversation with your mind shut, just don't even have the conversation. There's no point. Number two, you don't make time for you. You don't have any form of self-care. And this is going to look different for everyone. If you're not getting some form of activity or exercise in, if you're eating like shit all day, every day, if you're drinking too much or doing too much other extracurriculars or not indulging in your passions and hobbies and things that you enjoy and help or maybe it's helping others you know we get into this rhythm of life where we give ourselves to every other person to our kids or our family our job all these things and we neglect ourselves how can you enjoy your life if you're neglecting yourself it just doesn't even it doesn't make any sense. So I invite you to figure out some kind of time, either each day, each week, what I don't go each month, either each day or each week, and figure out something that you can do for you, for you only, not for your spouse, okay? Not for your kids, not for your job. What's something that you want to do that will bring joy into your life? Because let me tell you this, if you're unhappy, you're not helping all the other people in your life anyway. If you're unhappy, you're not setting the right example for say your kids. If you're neglecting yourself, you are not inspiring other people. You have to figure out a way to make time for yourself and prioritize yourself when you can. That doesn't mean you do go ahead and neglect everyone around you and your family and your job and all of these things. But find a way to do both. Find that balance. And all of this has to do with finding a balance. If you neglect yourself, what's the point? If you genuinely want to be happy, do something for you. And number three, it kind of goes along with that a little bit, but that is that you're not trying new things. Like I mentioned in the first aspect, you're just going through life on autopilot. You're doing, you're getting up at the same time, doing the same routine, talking to the same people, thinking the same way and going to bed. Again, it leaves no room for expansion. You know how it feels like as you get older, time goes faster and faster and faster and we can't figure out why. Um, man, I read this somewhere a while ago. I, I don't remember where it was, but it really stuck with me. And there's a reason for that. So think about it this way. When you're born and you're zero years old until you go up to one, everything is a new experience. You have so many new experiences. When you go one to two, so many new experiences, you know, walking and eating new food and seeing new things, you know, and, and think about that every year, right? You're always experiencing so many new things, but by the time you get to, Oh, my counter guys here. Not sure exactly where we were at. Um, I do most of the work myself on my rentals, but I need some new countertops for my new tenants. So no slum lording here. That's for sure. Um, actually, if you want to see it, I redid this basement. It was crazy. I'll see if I can find the picture, but this is like the bar area. And then I just refinished some carpeting in and my friend helped me with the ceiling tiles. So I'll see if I can insert a picture of what it was like when I bought it a few years ago because it was disgusting. Gross. It was like scary down here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Anyway, I think we were talking about what trying new things. So I'm in like a better mood now too. Um, oh yeah, we were talking about how when you're like little, everything is a new experience. So as you get older, things become more routine. So you're experiencing less new things. And that's why time seems to go like, there we go, um, so much quicker. 
So if you want time to slow down and if you want to expand your mind and what you're doing with your life, then do new things. Even if it sounds scary, even if you do it by yourself, I do new shit all the time by myself. And sometimes it's a little intimidating. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh yeah, it's so easy every time. But um, it is fun. Even if it's just like going to a new movie that you want to see and like you don't have someone to see it with or um, go to like a food festival or just find something that's in your area. I usually find my stuff on Facebook Marketplace. It just kind of like pops up like, oh, this event. Um, and it's like a good time. So just like expand yourself and try new things, read new books, like that kind of thing. And I promise it'll bring a lot of joy and excitement back into your life. All right. Let's talk about the fourth reason why your life sucks. <coughs> this one might be a little triggering for some of you. And I'm saying all of this with love because the inspiration of this video is not just people online, but people in my personal life and even myself. So, and this is financial knowledge and discipline. I believe that most of us probably didn't have a lot of that education growing up. Um, not in necessarily a malicious way. It's like our, you know, our parents are like gatekeeping, you know, like, oh, I'm not gonna teach them this. It's not, first of all, things are different now. We have to prepare differently than our parents and our grandparents did. And also, if you are someone that's a little older watching this, it's not too late to educate yourself. I spent years, and even now, I still do a lot of research on how to be financially stable and what measurements to take. And I actually have a video on that here with like the five top things I do. Um, I'll link it right here in case you want to, to check it out. But let's be real here. One of the biggest reasons people are miserable right now is because we're stressed financially. What was it like the average American doesn't even have $500 in their savings account to cover like emergencies or expenses. And this isn't to criticize you or make you feel bad about things. It's just a fact that learning about finances and utilizing your resources efficiently and correctly will have a really big impact on not only like your life and the material things, but think about how much stress you have that's related to finances and how good it would feel to not have that financial stress. Okay. And that's really the whole point of this. Like if you have your pulse on finances, um, oh, hold on the counter guys. Back. <laughs> he just wanted to give me his uh, business cards, but just think about how much stress it would alleviate from your life. And that translates into our health, like our physical health, our mental health. And it can be daunting to learn about this. Um, so my suggestion is honestly, check out that video. It is like the five top ways that I keep control of my finances and things that everyone can do even if you are struggling right now. I want that stability for you. I want you to lead this video with some sort of direction and motivation to better your life so that you don't feel like your life sucks because it doesn't have to feel that way. All right, and so if you're feeling triggered by this, what did I say at the beginning of this video? There's a reason for that. So I say this with love and I create this video to give you a little kick in the ass if you need it. So the next thing I wanna talk about <clears throat> this is the lack of emotional intelligence. Most people, again, will think that they have emotional intelligence and we all have some to some degree. However, the majority of people have a lot less than they believe they do. And in my opinion, Emotional intelligence is far more important than intellectual intelligence, okay? It's more important to understand how to regulate your emotions, understand other people, than it is to know what the square root of 81 is. It's nine, by the way. <laughs> I am a little bit of a math nerd, but that's besides the point. I suck at history. 
So emotional intelligence is a skill that can be learned and built on. And honestly, a lot of what emotional intelligence is, is videos like this where you do have to dig into yourself and, and look at yourself in a way that is constructive, but not mean. There's again, a balance where you can kind of beat yourself up a little bit, question things about yourself and learn who you are, why you feel the way you do, why you think the way you do, why you are the way you are, and pull those things apart so that you can put them back together piece by piece, okay? To create the, the, the person that you desire to be. And it extends so much more when you, you, when you do it with yourself first, it naturally will happen where you start to understand others more. And why is that helpful? It's helpful in every situation. If you can understand why people do the things they do or that it's not always what it is on the surface, but the things that are brewing you know, inside in a person, right? More love and compassion comes from that. So imagine if the whole world was working on their emotional intelligence and they were walking through life with love and with compassion and how that would change the entire world. It, it it's, it's kind of like, it feels like we can't do anything. It feels like we're just, you know, I'm just me. What am I going to do? I can't change anything. But it does truly start on a personal level. And if everyone were to do that, it collectively would change the entire world. So don't worry about what other people are doing and worry about what you're doing. Controlling your own emotions, understanding your own emotions, and exploring yourself. If you take away anything from this video on how to make your life suck less, okay? Create a good life for yourself. It is to dive into the depths of yourself and pick yourself apart and understand these things. And also know that it's kind of never ending, but the more and more you do it, it's kind of like a, it's like front loaded where at the very beginning it's, it's, it's hard to see these demons inside of us and to work through them. But you, you, when you do that, you clear them out and you heal them. So the longer that you do it, the, the, the easier it gets. All right. Especially because simultaneously you're learning more about yourself. So, um, the camera says four, four, four. And the last thing I want to talk about is very prominent in our society and our culture. And that is a negative and victim mindset. And trust me, I still battle this from time to time. Actually, right now, I, for some of you that don't know, I'm in sales full time. I, I work in real estate investing and my sales, my deals have been very down the last few weeks. And in the past, I would have really spiraled out of control at this point. And now, because I've done so much work on myself and I know and I know myself enough to know that that's a possibility if I allow my mindset to go there. I'm like consistently combating that and it doesn't mean I never go down that path, but it means instead of drowning in it for weeks, months, years, whatever, I might go through it for like an hour or a day or whatever and I can pull myself out of it, okay? And we're so bombarded by so much chaos and negativity all day, every day, that it's no wonder that a lot of us feel that way. So it's not your fault that you feel that way. Oh, oh, uh, also check out my video um, about neuropathways. I'll, I'll, I'll link it here. This will give you a more scientific understanding of why you're in this rut of negative thinking and like kind of how to pull yourself out of it. Oh, it's so good. It's like one of my favorite videos I've ever created. So definitely check that out if you want to learn more about like how to not be negative. And the thing is negativity actually 
feels good in this weird way um, because it's what we feel safe with if that's what we're used to. So there's a part of us that feel good indulging in negativity, myself included. So once you can learn how to build those new neuro pathways in your brain to become happier ones, your brain will feel more comfortable being happy than it will negative. So it'll feel even better than it does now to be happy because truthfully, a lot of people are very miserable, but you have to want to change that for it to change. It has to be an internal thing within you and not something external, right? Like a lot of us will sit there and say, oh, well, when I get in this relationship, I'll be happy. When I get this job, I'll be happy. When, you know, I make money, I'll, I'll be happy. When I lose this weight, I'll be happy. It's not true. It's not true. You have to do it internally and the external will follow. Okay, it's just like law of attraction 101, you know, I hope that you got something out of this video and that it gave you some sort of insight to yourself. That really is the goal of all my videos is that I want you to really be looking inwards because everything starts within us and that's how you build out your life the way that you want it to be. And you deserve a good life. We all do. We deserve to be happy and at peace and fulfilled. So if you don't believe you do, then that's a really good place to start is figuring out why you don't feel that way. So I encourage you to maybe journal and see what comes out about these, you know, six things and go from there. You know, I'm always here if you have any questions, if you want to explore it a little further, but need some guidance, just like drop a comment, message me on Instagram, whatever. And, um, I'm here to help. So I make these videos, you know, I love you guys. And I just really hope you found value. And if you did, it would mean the world to me. And it helps with the algorithm if you would just like and uh, you share or comment this video and make sure you subscribe if you like this kind of content. I love you guys so much. And don't forget, be limitlessly yourself. Mm -hmm.